hey all greetings welcome once again to the channel saborni here this side with another exciting tutorial on aws lambda so today what i'm going to cover is uh i'm going to demonstrate a setup of uh, how a lambda function can be used along with amazon sqs so there would be producers who are going to publish certain messages to one of the sqs queue and the lambda service is going to read those uh messages or events from those queues and go, it's going to trigger a function that you're going to configure so depending upon the use case you can actually utilize this event source mapping altogether so coming to you might ask what event source mapping is before going ahead into the depth of how this entire setup works so event source mapping is basically a lambda resource so under the hood it basically reads the event uh, source that you configure and it invokes the function accordingly so there are different services of which can be configured as a trigger to your event source mappings which mainly includes dynamodb kinesis mq uh, managed streaming for kafka service and self-managed uh, apache kafka along with that our sqs so coming back to this specific setup we are going to fix our fix it our discussion only on this for now and the later tutorials i will be definitely covering the other uh, event source tri mapping triggers okay so here what what the lambda service would do so there would the service would be taking care of the polling activities from the queue it's going to read the queue on your behalf and it's going to invoke your function synchronously whichever which whichever function you're going to configure in your event source mapping setup uh, in your setup basically okay so in the form of batches lambda reads those events from the queues and uh, sing and invokes the function synchronously and it also takes care of the deletion of the messages available in the queue so that it doesn't land up with the multiple invocation of the same message okay coming to the event structure how it's going to look it's basically uh, going to send a records array uh, a list of event altogether you could see so this is one if the first event for example you have tested with a test uh, message body and the second event altogether that you have uh, published to your sqs queue okay so in case of fifo as well uh, the event structure is quite similar so but there are certain uh, additional uh, additional attributes that can be taken into account like the deduplication id and the sequencing these are some additional attributes that get added up and nothing else uh, coming to how the lambda reads a batch so it basically the messages whenever they are available in the sqs servers since it's a distributed system altogether so when a consumer tries to say for example a producer has published uh, those uh, published a specific message so sqs is going to try to keep the so the specific message that you have sent high redundantly available in the sqs servers so whenever there would be a consumer that are coming in and trying to read that specific message so what it's going to do there was a visibility timeout configuration for the queue so at that point of time at that 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 specific time whatever you're going to configure no other consumers are going to observe that message specific message available in the queue altogether and the consumer whichever is try of reading that specific message after reading is done it has to ensure that it deletes it from the queue altogether else redundant messages would be uh, available in the queue and it would be consumed by other consumers so lambda deletes those messages from the queue once uh, it your function is successfully processed uh, process it it basically it successfully processes the batch once that is done in case there is an error all the messages are then available again on the queue and they would be sent back to your function for reprocessing so coming to the scaling uh, and the processing behavior so for standard queues basically lambda uses polling activities so until the the uh, until it becomes active 
and when the messages are available lambda in reads up to five batches and then triggers your function okay if there are huge volumes of uh, events that are available in the queue their scalability takes place in such a way that the service scales up by adding 60 more instances per minute and this addition takes place unless and until it reaches to a maximum of 1000 number on 1000 instances for processing so at a time at max there can be 1000 batches that are getting processed say parallelly okay so now uh, comes the the part of the demonstration uh, so in my uh, aws console i'm just going to create an sqs standard queue so here how you create a queue here altogether so there are two options that you get so in standard queue what happens once uh there, there is no specific order in which whatever messages that you're going to publish that is maintained but in case of fifo queues those are maintained message orderings and you can also group those messages in the form in uh, by configuration by certain configurations that are available for FIFO queues. So I'm I'm just going to create a test queue altogether. And setting the visibility timeout to 30 seconds, which is the uh, which is an important factor here altogether. I'll just keep uh, this enabled and uh, this encryption so that in transit whatever messages that I am publishing they are actually encrypted and I'm going to just select the uh, SSE SQS this specific one encryption key type but for the simplicity of the entire setup what I can do I will just mark it to keep it as disabled okay and uh, regarding the access policy part in case you are setting up a specific lambda function which belongs to some other accounts you need to specify the use and all the details here what specific actions do you want to perform on this test queue and there are certain additional attributes that you can set up here like a dead letter queue so whenever there are uh processing that are taking place and, and and certain messages that are undelivered they can be sent to a redirected to a dead letter queue that can be configured so i'm just uh, i will just go ahead and create the queue for you so this one is ready now and it's available for sending and receiving the messages so i will just quickly try to test ensure that my queue is working so i just sent here a hello one message body and the message has been sent and it is uh, already received so here in the receive messages section basically uh, receive it it performs uh, the uh, receive message operations here so you're just going to click on i'm just going to click on this poll for messages and here whatever the message that i have published is available in the queue so let's go to the lambda function console now so i'm just going to create a function so there is a blueprint that is available here so i'm just going to search for sqs sqs polar so it's going to create a node.js application here which is going to pull the messages from my queue so i will click on configure and test func esm say for example is the name and I'm just going to create a new role from the sample template policies that are available, which is for SQS polar permissions. Now I just need to, so this is the ESM configuration uh, that I'm doing here, this SQS trigger. This is the event source mapping that I'm doing. So I'm just clicking, I will be selecting the queue that I want to add so that my Lambda service is going to read that from the read all the events that are available in the queue. And the three important factors that triggers the function in case of an ESM for specifically for the SQS service here is the batch size batch window. So what is batch size? So when you specify a batch size, say for example, a batch size of 10. So at a maximum, my Lambda service is going to send 10 messages to my function for invocation. So it's going to read 
uh, irrespective of uh, whatever the reading capabilities of the service is, it's going to read those from the queue and it's going to send 10 records ultimately at once. It's basically going to read and send it to your function. And batch window, uh, if you specify, say for example, by default, it generally takes up to a maximum of 20 seconds. So within 20, so if, if you specify a time here, for example, 20 seconds, so within 20 seconds, it's going to wait for the total number of the number of events that uh, lambda is going to send all together even if it doesn't reach a batch size of 10 so whatever say five event has arrived so it's going to send that batch accordingly there are certain additional settings in case of retries so if a processing uh, while processing the function uh, fails so it's going to you can specify uh, in case you want to split the entire batch into certain halves and they get processed partially so i'm just no, uh, not going to enable those here for now and i will go ahead with the creation of my function so it's asking possibly for a role name let's give a role name and let's create the function so my function got created here and you could see here uh, the sks Q has been added as the trigger. So the state it says that it's getting created. So we'll refresh, refresh this one and the state now you could see it's marked as enabled. Okay. So uh, we will perform a test altogether. So already one message is available in the queue. So ideally my function should get triggered. So whether it gets triggered or not, I will just monitor that so view logs in cloudwatch logs so once i click on that i'll see whether my log groups got created or not and yes it got created and it even got triggered so the one that i published was hello one okay so what my code is doing let's have a quick look it's basically iterating over the event that uh, the function is receiving, iterating over the records key here. And the records is basically a list or an array of events altogether. And uh, it's, it's basically picking out the message ID along with the body. So let's try to publish two messages altogether. One, two, and one, two, three simultaneously and one two three four see for example okay let's see how my function is going to behave in this case are getting processed by the same container the same log group uh, log stream it would be continued on individual invocation that took place here and uh, say hello one two three and hello one two three four whatever messages that i have published they are readily available so Currently, you are observing that multiple separate invocations, the batching behavior is somehow not available right now. Uh, it's, you, you are unable to observe that. But whenever you're going to test with bulk amount of data, the batching behavior comes into the play. That's all from my end. That's what I wanted to demonstrate here. So if you have any question, you can put it on the comment section and we'll be glad to address those questions of yours. And I believe the tutorial really... Uh, is an engaging one and uh, you you got to learn many things about the service please uh, feel free to subscribe and like press the bell icon for sure for uh, the latest videos and updates wish you a great day ahead bye for now